Hello everyone, how's it going today? Happy Friday! So we are back to uh, continue building our medieval town square. Uh, we had gotten partway through uh, this second building. So let's go ahead and open up bag number six and get right to it. Got lots of uh, dark brown uh, pieces that were used as uh, thatch in the Lion Knight's castle and uh, continues to be used as a thatch here. Howdy, Bubba, how's it going? Uh, not a whole lot, still recovering from my cold and the hives. And it is uh, it has taken a little while, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, got a pair of uh, large arches. Let's get those up there. Some large plates. There we go. All right, we need... There we go. There's our hinge piece. So how is everyone doing today? Happy that it is uh, the weekend? <coughs> Get that hinge right on there. What am I going to start after this? Uh, I don't know yet. Depends on when we finish. Depends on what I have uh, on hand at the time. There are new sets coming out. Soon. Well, a new set coming out uh, pretty soon that I uh, do want to get. And get started on kind of right away. So that might come right after this. But I don't know yet. There we go. Red Hyena, subscribed at Tier 1 for seven months. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Let's get a couple of brown 1x2s in here. All right, some more. I'm assuming that these are representing, like, uh where plaster has come off kind of thing. But I don't know for sure. Uh, I'm waiting for a uh, double VIP points day or a, um, uh, a really good uh, gift with purchase to order it. So I have not actually ordered it yet. Plan on winning big hams tonight? Well, good luck on that. There we go. Alright, let's see. A 1 by 5 and a 1 by 3 over here. And a 2 by 3 on the other side. There we go. Some more brown bricks. There we go. So I have uh, not forgotten about the lighthouse by any means. Uh, unfortunately, the, the early part of the year tends to be um, rather light on double VIP points days. Um, it's usually, like, towards the end of the year that, that you start getting, like, double VIP points every month as they're building up for uh, Christmas. Same thing with gifts with purchase and stuff like that. I mean, there there have been some now, but like I'd want I'd want one that is uh, like a two hundred fifty bucks or something like that. There's going to be a gift with purchase um, next month for the uh, D and D set, but that's not um, like that. That's 
only with that set kind of thing. Um, and there's probably going to be a double VIP points uh, day for the um, May 4th, but that'll be Star Wars. It'll be restricted to Star Wars, so... <clears throat> I don't know what else is coming up. They don't usually announce the things until, like, really shortly before they do them. Would I ever do the uh, Pac-Man set soon? I can't say about soon, but I would like to get it at some point. I don't have any current plans for it, and I don't, I don't have it right now. Oops, I do not need two of these on here. There we go. Pac-Man set is neat. It does look pretty cool. It does look pretty cool. go. It also had a use for the brick separator. Ooh. Well, that's pretty cool. There we go. Get that on there. Just built a set on Monday. What'd you build? Continue on with our chimney here. There's a two by two. All right, that gets in there. Howdy, Kinshir, how's it going? There we go, that gets in there, and then a pair of one-by-one one plates there. So basically, they're stepping it up... Um, two plates every time. Although, here we have a full brick and not two plates. So I'm curious what the difference is going to be there. I don't know that set offhand by the number. Alright, so we got six of the uh, monster feet. I think they were for some kind of rock, rock monster uh, type thing. Start of our thatched roof. Right there. Now we only use five. These angles. Not sure if we're going to have the other angles anywhere. Okay, that just fits right in there. There we go. Ah, the garbage truck. That one did look pretty good. Uh, one by one tile on the end. There we go. Yeah, I have been uh, tempted by some of the new Technic sets. Not usually that into Technic these days. And there we go, right on the edge. Might build a set while you watch? Well, that is always a fun thing to do.
All right, we need a, a tan a one by one plate. So that has definitely been a an interesting few weeks uh, <laughs> for me. Does feel good to be uh, doing some Lego building again. That is for sure. My hives are, are mostly gone. But it has taken a while. Alright, we have a round window piece to put right up there. Did I ever find a place to display the Rivendell set? Uh, yes, I did. I should probably take a picture of it, although I do want to move it a little bit. I want to put the uh, Lion Knight's castle in where it is, and put it where the Lion Knight's castle is. Alright, so... That is going to go right here. So we get a, a little bit of a curved look to this. It was a gorgeous build. All the roof tiles made it worth it. Oh yeah, yeah. It wasn't even like that's not even the the, the most annoying thing that I've built. Uh, that roof part. Um, the being able to use uh, a tile to smooth them out really helped. Uh, I did do a build on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but it was, uh, was it last week that I didn't? I don't know. I've missed some stuff. There we go. Get that in there. And we need a pair of dark brown 1x2s. There we go. And there we go. What was the most annoying? Oh, definitely the uh, Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower looks amazing, but it is not a, a great set to actually build in a lot of ways. And that's not really, like, I knew it, I knew it wouldn't be the best build. So it's not like I, I I felt like cheated or anything like that, but it definitely was. Uh, there was a lot going on with that one that uh, um, <laughs> there's a lot of repetition and stuff like that and finickiness. But that's it, it's kind of like the I mean the thing is is that it's really really difficult to actually build. Uh, like, make things that look real with Lego, and the more realistic they are, the it tends to be the the worse the build is in a lot of ways, and that sh these should actually be turned that way. If that makes sense. Because, um... Did I see the... I don't actually play that, pay that much attention to uh, ideas stuff. Um, I, I do... You know, I'll, I'll vote on a few things, but I don't, I don't like, actively... Um, I don't, I don't want to get, like... It's a proper way to put it. Um, I don't want to get invested in them. Because a, no matter what happens, there's there's going to be stuff that changes, um, which is perfectly fine. It doesn't bother me, but I don't want to get invested in it. Like I've seen so many people get invested, and then, like when something isn't picked, um, they get angry and and stuff like that, and 
uh, or when the, the final uh, build doesn't look, in their view, as good as the original, they get annoyed, and I don't want to fall into that. I don't want to fall into that trap. There we go. Alright, so we got a uh, nice kind of arched thatch there. It's pretty cool. Well, the the thing about the uh, Eiffel Tower wasn't so much the um, like the the colors weren't the problem. Uh, it was really just the fact that it is uh, so repetitive. But like, you know, just about any realistic building tends to be repetitive. You know, if there was a scale model of the uh, um, the Empire State Building, that was, that was like, the, the size, the, the scale of the, uh, Eiffel Tower, that'd be a really repetitive build, too. That's just how it works. As long as you expect it going into it, it's not really an issue. You know, and if that's something that you don't want in your builds, then don't get that set. It's as simple as that. Which is fine. Like, you know, I mean, there, there's reasons to get sets and there's reasons not to get sets, so. Alright, so spare parts. We've got white and uh, tan 1x1 one one plates. We've got uh, gray 1x1 one one cylinder plate, dark brown 1x1 one one tile slope, and brown 1x1 one one cylinder plate with bar. All right, so bag number seven up next. Like, the Eiffel Tower was very much a set about seeing it all come together in the end, as opposed to you know, having the joy of the build, so to speak. Makes you appreciate the builds like the uh, police station with interiors and even a little story. Yeah. Yeah. And and the thing is, is like, one of the, the things about the modular city sets is that given that they are only like two to three stories tall... There's a lot less time to make it repetitive. You know? Um, if if Lego minifigs were actually to scale people, like, to scale, uh, to human scale, um, and so you made a building like that that was uh, an appropriate number of floors, um, the interiors probably wouldn't be repetitive, but the exterior parts would be really repetitive. Really love the detail of the dude trying to dig his uh, way out of the jail cell on that one. Yeah, that was pretty nice. That was pretty nice. That was a great little detail. And there are the scissors. All right, so here is our, our weaver guy. Good torso. <laughs> Mark Twain, <laughs> not quite. All right, so let's see. All right, let's build a beehive. And put a happy little bee on top. There we go. And that goes right there in the middle.
And we have a pumpkin. Like, as a building of that sort should probably be, like, ten stories tall. You know, in a... In that kind of, uh... Environment. But it would look weird in Lego form. Because Lego is just not properly scaled that way. Lego minifigs. Um, but yeah, it would be really repetitive to build uh, a, a building like that. All right, let's see. We've got some carrots growing. And I guess a, a radish, daikon radish. There we go. There we go. Alright, then on the side we have dark green and bright orange. Growing right here. I was actually expecting this to have some uh, half timbering right, rather than plants. Another bright orange. And a dark green one-by-one one flower plate, which I don't know if they've done dark green in this part before. If I can get it actually on the stud here. All right, maybe it'll be easier if I do that without the, uh, fla the plant. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right, and then some uh, actual flowers. Mm, uh, need another uh, dark green here. For the base. And then white flowers. And a white flower with a bee on it. Happy little bee. There we go. Come on, focus. There we go. Happy little bee on the flower. And that gets right here. There we go. That's a very nice little touch. Okay, and then we have a bin... Oh, I need the other knife. Okay, I was not expecting them to uh, call back to that. All right. Let's get it off the sprue. Which means I might need some other pieces. I guess we'll find out. All right. So first of all, we have our carrot. We have our radish. And then we put a knife in there. There we go. Okay, and then we do the chimney. And it uses a, uh, a horn for smoke, which is an interesting use there. There we go. All right, so flip it around and make the door here. I'm 
a 1x6 tile there. 1x4 right here. 1x2, 1x2, and then some uh, dark green 1x1 one one quarter cylinder tiles. There we go. And the door handle. All right, then we are using a 4L bar for the actual door hinge. And there we go. So we have the uh, the door for the house. Brick built. Howdy, Cloud the Warthog. How's it going? All right, next up, we get... This is going to be the... Um, not the loom. Uh, I don't know what it is called when you're weaving a tapestry on... on the stand like this. Maybe it is a loom. I don't know. All right, go. One by one by four antennas. Uh, it's supposed to be thatch. It's definitely supposed to be thatch. Okay, six L bar with stop at the top. And one by ones with top clips. Make sure that they are straight. There we go. And then bars with clips. Yeah, it's the way that they like to do thatch um, these days. The, uh, the roof of the old one is also supposed to be thatch. Um, I think that it would look better if these were only sticking up one plate rather than two. But that would make it a lot thicker and be a lot more difficult to uh, do. All right, next up. You get the uh, one by four with round ends. And bars with clips inside. There we go. Slide that up to the top. There we go. All right, one by two uh, plate with round ends. There we go. And a pair of beige one by one by four, or uh, four L bars. There we go. And then bar holders with clips on the bottom. Okay, that goes on there. Doesn't uh, touch the bottom. I don't know if that's how that's supposed to be. All right, let's see. Two uh, bars with clips and a bar holder with clip. Where 
is that? That's like partway up, right there. It's a very complex little uh, creation here that we're we're doing. And the other bar holder with clip. Not with clippy, though. Just with clip. Okay. And then we need uh, number 13. Okay, that is going to go like that. Okay. Might be best if I uh, put it on this way. There we go. Uh, that could have gotten a lot higher. Actually. Howdy, Seelin, how's it going? Let's see if I can get this off and not be a problem. No, I think I'm. I think I'm gonna have to stick with that. Should have gotten it more uh, closer to the top. But it is the uh, the yellow castle and the uh, the joust from those sets. If it would focus, on focus. There we go. So we got the yellow castle and the joust, and you can see the brick built horses. Is good. That is excellent. There we go. Get that on there. And then the 6L bar with stop gets in there. Yeah, I think this is a loom. Let's see, does this tapestry look familiar? The motif on the tapestry maker's latest design is actually based on the popular jousting tournament scene from the 1978 Lego model 375 castle. There we go. And have him in there working on it. There we go. Howdy, Bahamut. How's it going? So, pretty cool. I do like that uh, that tapestry. Alright, next up, we're going to connect it to the other building, I think. Yes, we are. There we go. And a two by two curved slope down here on the bottom. And two one by ones with uh, cross axle holes. There we go. That goes up on the top right there, and we get the 3L axle with stop right in there to lock them in. Alright, so now we can hinge this one into a position, into the position that we want it in. The 
can I oop, oh. so you can either uh, put it flat and uh, flush like that, and it actually does uh, look pretty good that way. Or you can hinge it out in some some angle that you want it at. Get the uh, the wheel back on there. All right, that is it for that step. All right, so spare parts. We got uh, three stem uh, plant. We got a carrot top in green and bright green. Bright green three leaf uh, element. Um, one by one plate flowers in orange and white and dark green. One by one cylinder plate with hollow stud in gray. Trans light blue one by one cylinder plate. One by one cylinder tile with a B pattern. A black bucket handle. Silver scissors. A uh, long bison horn in uh, white. And a dark green one by one quarter cylinder uh, tile. Get in there. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and move that back because we are starting the next part. Just got uh, done shopping. Got Skittles and cup noodles. Nice. I've not actually had Skittles in quite a while. All right, so bag number eight. Oh, I did not realize that the set had the... Uh, so I noticed these doors in the D&D um, &D set. And I didn't realize that this set had one. So it's it's kind of like a standard door, but textured, and you can put a window in there. This is a, a fantastic, fantastic uh, return to some of the uh, the doors that we've previously had. Very happy to see that return. And this is kind of a, um, this has been around for a little bit, but again, textured kind of uh, that, that half door that you would see in a stable. Let's see. Let's go ahead and make our little kid. We've got another uh, set of knives. There's his head. There's his torso. There's his hat. Where's his uh, legs? Dark brown legs. There they are. So this hat is uh, used for the um, the dwarves in the uh, the recent Snow White set. So it's nice to get some of those without having to get the Snow White set. <laughs> and there's a spoon. All right. There we go. He can be up here. All right. First of all, get the hinge on here. There's a gray brick brick. Two gray two by two tiles. All right, a pair of gray one by one plates. It's brand new for you, uh, the uh, one that has a paper cup that is microwavable. I've never actually, I don't think I've ever actually had cup noodles. 
I usually just get brick ramen. Have dinosaurs celebrating pickles? Dinosaurs never celebrate pickles. Look, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was made entirely of pickles. I can't believe you're so insensitive. Wow. Jeez. Can't believe it. Gray 1x4 Brick Brick. I mean, give a thought to their feelings, you know? They were killed by pickles. The microwave was only recently invented in the 1970s. That's true. All right, then we take our 16 by 16 plate. Get that on there. Another one by two and one by four. All right, some green pieces here on the sides for a little bit of uh, sod and stuff. Listen, the jar of pickles that uh, killed off the dinosaurs was angry that they didn't uh, do the celebration dance that, that day. I, I don't think that's the case. I don't think it had feelings. Alright, so we get uh, another one by one over here. Another one by four brick brick. One by three tile and plate. Where is the uh, gray one by three plate? There it is. Get the other brick brick there. All right, one more gray, one by one. There it is. There we go. Okay, now turn it around this way. And we get a one by six plate up here. Two by two. Corner and quarter cylinder tile there, and some half tiles and things like that. This is uh, definitely an interesting uh, design. Not really done this before. I guess it's to make it look like they're cracked and stuff like that. Go. How inconsiderate all pickle asteroids have feelings too. No, they don't. They're not. They're not sentient. They, they they're not thinking things. It's it's not how it works. And howdy, little bunny. How's it going? Half tiles in there. More regular tiles. Ah, uh, you could say the same for me. Going decently enough. <laughs> Still trying to uh, get rid of this cold and uh, the uh, the hives. 
they're both getting better slowly. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Yeah, all right. So there should be one more. One more. Oh, there it was hiding. There we go. Okay. So we got the tile floor done. Okay, let's see. We got uh, brown half tiles. One by two tile slope and two one by one tiles with top clips. Where are those? There's, there they are. Probably going to be a fireplace right there. All right, one by one plate with clip, one by one plate, and another one by one plate with clip. And one by one brick. And we have a one by two tile right there. All right. Someday in the future, people are researching Alt's videos will uh, think that there were only two things on going on with ham and pickles. All right, let's see. Double one by one stacks in brown. Right there and right there. And a one by one brick and two one by one plates. Need three of these. Time to progress the story a little. No, but more grinding. Could be doing grinding. Don't you want to do grinding? Or as I uh, do it in um, Final Fantasy uh, Tactics Advance. Stealing! More stealing. All the stealing. Alright, so five sets of these. That's three. Four, five, all right. And brown, one by two plates. You already have 20 plus hours, you don't need to grind more? I don't know, I don't think you've ground enough until the, uh, the timer rolls over or gets stuck at uh, its maximum. That's when you know it's done. That's when you know you're done. Surprised I haven't stolen someone's lungs in FFTA yet. Don't worry, the assassin class will uh, will do something similar. It is kind of a surprise that they don't have like a thief uh, skill that's like steel breath or something. You've been watching my uh, Stardew Valley playthrough? I well, hope you're enjoying it. I've stolen everything else. I love stealing abilities. That is such a great skill. It's a shame that uh, Viera and Numo can't be thieves. Because I can't have them steal other people's uh, thoughts and dreams, you know? And steal kiss is a charm ability. <laughs> there, one by three, and one by two. There we go. Nope. One 
One by two by two brick and a panel in yellow. Don't know why it's yellow. Oop. Need to get the uh, flames in here. Yeah, if you think you, you had to stop yourself in one episode from uh, doing a uh, multi-page thing on salmon berries. Hey, you know what? That's perfectly fine. You don't... You never need to stop yourself from something like that. I genuinely did not know that uh, salmon berries were a real thing. I, I kind of thought that they were made up for the game, <laughs> to be honest. Sounds like they're a Pacific Northwest thing. There we go, we got our flames in there. Now another one by two by two, and our one by four by two arch. So there we go, we have our fireplace. Actually, I think it's probably an oven or stove. They grow wild and in Japan. Yeah, some people were uh, commenting on that. But yeah, I mean, that's just kind of how, you know, the game... The game has other fictional things in it, so... Yeah, I saw you mention that, that they're uh, related to roses. Which I definitely would never have uh, considered. Look a lot like thimbleberries that we have around that you have around there. So we have uh, wild uh, blackberries and raspberries, I think, which, as much as they look alike are or look similar, are not actually related. Um, one of them is a stone fruit, and the other one is uh, not. Can't remember what the proper term for the, for it is. Stone fruit being um, fruit that have pits. All right, so we have our table. We got round white one by one, round top one by one piece there. We got sand green tile slope. We've got a bright orange tile slope, a black one by one tile clip. And the dark gray knife. When you saw that salmon berries were related to roses, your first th thought was, how? <laughs> yeah, whichever one... Um, and I can't remember whether it's raspberries or blackberries that are stone fruit. Uh, basically, each of the little nodules is a separate individual fruit. Whereas on the other one, the entire cluster is the fruit, and it's a specific type of uh, um, fruit thing that, that's uh, where the fruit is, is like a, uh, a cluster. Oops. That needs to go there. Another white round top piece there. And a bright orange... Oh, that's yellow. Oops. This one is yellow. This one is bright orange. So this kid must have a lot of friends, because uh, no one has as many friends as a man with many cheeses. So, there we go. Got tables full of cheeses.
All right, we have our white lattice pane that goes in right there. Okay, door frame. And a door knob. There we go. So that's uh, that's pretty nice, the, uh, the textured look to this door. I really do like that. That's pretty fantastic. And that goes right in there. All right, then we get a chair, probably made by the uh, woodworker. We should have taken biology more seriously. Well, the good news is that uh, Wikipedia is there for you to just randomly read. That's what I like to do in my spare time. Randomly read Wikipedia. <laughs> Alright, one by three. We got a one by one plate with clip. One by one plate on there. One by one brick. Get another uh, one by one there. Pair of uh, brown one by one bricks there. One by two plate. One by two plate. And a one by one plate with clip. There we go. All right, let's make sure that this is all straight because. Uh, I mean, so many uh, one by ones and one by twos, it tends to not get straight. There we go. All right. And then we put on the, uh, this door element. Okay. So unfortunately, like, it actually does close flush this way because the space in between is exactly a stud height. But that also means that it does not close flush there. I'm not sure if it would... Alright, it looks like it would be... Um, five, it's, it's exactly five studs long with the, uh, the space for the hinge. So that would be a, another way to do it. Alright. You don't lightly read Wikipedia, it consumes you, uh, leading you into a rabbit hole where you were uh, learning about quantum mechanics when you started learning about the flamingo feeding habits. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. It is, uh, it is a, a, a very, very fun thing to um, like play a little game of a try to get between various points on Wikipedia kind of thing. All right, so we have a uh, pot with some, uh, with an orange one by one cylinder plate inside, uh, tile inside. We got the uh, cauldron here, and we're going to put a one-by-one one cylinder plate in there. There we go. There we go. And then on the ground, we have a little bucket. There we go. White one-by-one one cylinder plate in there. And a kitty! Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, Wiki Edition. Yeah, something like that. Howdy, Canis Rufus. How's it going? Kitty! Oh. Kitty, kitty has his eyes on the prize. That, uh... That pot, uh, uh that, uh, um, bucket of uh, milk. Howdy, Shield of Hope. How's it going? Yay, kitty! Exactly. Uh, the cat fills a very important role in keeping the village free from mice and other pesky rodents. It seems only fair it should receive a little milk for its efforts. Oh. All right, so spare parts. Uh, brown and beige one-by-one -one plates. 
Uh, one by one quarter cylinder tile in medium nougat. One by one tile slopes in sand green and bright orange. One by one cylinder tiles in black and yellow. And a one by one cylinder plate in white. Oh, uh, also a gray one by one plate. A silver spoon and potentially extra a dagger. I'm going to leave it out just in case we need it. On a side note, you were reading a story on Facebook where someone's friend started uh, dating a farmer's son and he uh, brought a big block of cheese as a dating present. <laughs> Again, no one has as many friends as a man with many cheeses. Like, that guy knows. Small parts poured out. Got a, a large arch there. It's not an arch hall junior though. Okay, make a candle. Get that back by the cheese. And that brings us right back to Stardew Valley, yep. Cheese is expensive. Certain cheeses are more expensive, so that was a great dating present. Yeah. I mean, assuming she likes cheese. Or he. I don't know. Alright, let's see. Two of the side stud pieces. There we go. There we go. And one by three plate. There we go. And a one by two tile up here. There we go. One by three plate. All right, let's see. One by one plate, one by one brick. Right there. And right on the other side. I'm quite amused that Alda's uh, talking about putting the barn and the uh, tapping trees in the same place as you have my yours. <laughs> It seemed like a good place, although I'm definitely thinking that the barn is too far from everything. Like, I gotta, I gotta hike to get to the barn. And that's not the best. Alright, get the... Lattice panes in here. I mean, getting uh, access to a mayonnaise early definitely feels a little bit overpowered, honestly. <laughs> because that's good money. Like it's a guaranteed, um, like, 500G every day kind of thing. Right, there we go. Get our uh, window right in there. You also find it interesting that in Dragon Quest Monsters, Dark Prince, the monster's world is split up as it is. 
I, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, lactose intolerance, and uh, that is a thing. You rushed getting ducks, and you, you were making over 1,000 a day just from mayonnaise before the end of spring. Yeah, I kind of kind of wish I had uh, upgraded my uh, my coop and uh, barn a little bit earlier. I need to get on that. Really need to get on that. There we go, one by one with two studs. And a... is it black or is it... yeah, it's black. One by one cylinder plate. There we go, with hollow stud. Okay, a one by four brown plate on top. Alright. There's a dark red one by one plate flower. I also neglected to buy something from the traveling merchant early on and because I was like, I'll I'll have more opportunities and you know, I'm not having more opportunities. <laughs> I'm kind of regretting not buying it. Alright, so we want a pair of elevens. There we go. Okay, so I need to zoom in a little bit and make sure that I have this set up properly. Okay. So the, yeah, the cheese is on top. All right. Find it weird that uh, your dad is lactose intolerant and you're not? Hey, well, you know, if you want to go in that direction, uh, both of my parents are lefties and my sister and I are righties. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But yeah, lactose persistence is, uh, is an interesting thing. In part because, like, if you stop ingesting dairy, you can lose it. Like, it is, it is uh, genetic, but it's also something that can basically be turned off. Like, if you just stop ingesting uh, dairy for a few years, chances are you'll become lactose intolerant. Alright, there we go. Get the uh, sign right in there. Let's zoom in on the uh, cheese sign. I guess those are knives of some kind. Cheese knives, maybe. Alright, on the back side, we get a black one by one tile with top clip and a spoon. There we go. Oops. Actually zoom out slightly more. There we go. Alright, next up we got the one for this side.
keep up with your on your dairy intake with cheese and milk. Yeah, I uh, I do enjoy a, a nice glass of milk. All right, let's see. Okay, brown one by four along the top again. It's interesting that the uh, the windows they're they're doing the um, they're having the windows uh, basically reversed, so the uh, the windows are very deep. Um, and I just have not seen uh, that very often, so it's a uh, definitely an interesting thing. Reason for losing the capacity for uh, processing dairy is if you uh, don't eat dairy, the uh, bacteria that eat it die off and you can't regain them. Well, but also, um, like, there, there is a genetic component to it, too. There we go. And we take the, uh, the knife that I did keep from the previous bag, which I am glad that I did, and put it on the wall there, and that goes right in there. There we go. <laughs> Biology isn't your strong suit. That's fine. You're fine. I had a tendency to uh, take random science courses in college, so it was like, well, I could finish out my uh, my degree, or I could take some more basic sciences. And taking more basic sciences won out <laughs> very frequently. There's a reason it took me five years to get a two-year degree. Basic science for the win, indeed. Howdy, Popcorn Rocks, how's it going? I was like, Psychology 101? Sure. Meteorology? Sure. Biology? Sure. These are all easy A's, and then I took biology, and I was like, oh, I got a B. <laughs> all right, let's see. There we go. All right, that's it. And then we get our Arch. Not Arch Hall Jr. You do not need to watch out for snakes. Doing good? You're just going to watch my XCOM files again? You saw I was live? Awesome. Well, well come on in. We are building a medieval uh, town square. There we go. All right, next up, three of the scroll week scroll work pieces. And brown, uh, gray one by ones with one by one tile clips on top. One thing you find interesting is the science of using bacteriophages to fight, help fight off bacteria in the human body that we don't want without using antibiotics. Yeah, it's always a good idea if you can get rid of bacteria without using antibiotics, which is one reason why, unless you're in like a a medical field or something like that, like in a hospital. Uh, it is not a great idea to um, use uh, antibacteria soap. Regular soap works just fine for that. Just inject bleach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we'd never, we'd never put someone uh, so stupid in such a powerful position to, uh, so it must be a good idea, right? I 
So it's sort of like how you can uh, train your immune system to fight off cancer. Uh, it's more that, um, like, bacteria can swap genes and stuff like that. So if you use anti uh, uh, antibiotics, um, there's a fair chance that the beneficial bacteria that you have in your body will become bacteria resist, well, like antibiotic resistant, and then that can be transferred to harmful bacteria that gets in your system. So if you have other ways of getting rid of the bacteria you don't want, uh, it tends to be uh, much better. Go. We got a, a tile across there, one by six, one by three here. Like, it always boggles my mind when I hear someone, like, go in for, to uh, see a doctor about something like a cold, uh, and the doctor gives them antibiotics, and it's like, what what are you doing? What are you doing? You are making the problem worse and not actually helping. Antibiotics do nothing against viruses. Well, but then you do a placebo rather than antibiotics. Like, there's a difference between placebo and antibiotics. Right, you do sugar pills. Treating a virus with antibiotics works every time. Perfect medicine practice. <laughs> Got to get our stats up. <laughs> All right, there we go. One by one plates in there. Use antibiotic syrup on your waffles each morning. Mmm, -mm, delicious. All right, let's see. Get a two by ten, one by four. Half tile there. Just need to put more points into resist disease. Yeah, exactly. Level up and improve your saving throws. One by one brick. Well, that's kind of why, like, AD&D works a little bit better for uh, simulating reality than uh, later editions where you get to choose what you put things into. AD&D, <laughs> it's random. All right, there we go. Got more of the uh, half timbering on here. We get a pair of gray one by two bricks for the chimney. More cheeses. And a cup. All right, and that goes right there. Above the window. You had a question? What's that? You haven't gotten super sick in years? I haven't gotten super sick in years, uh, but I isolate enough that uh, on the occasions when I do get a cold, um, it it kicks me out. Like it, it, it messes me up, and of course, like if there's a cold that someone nearby has, I'm going to get it kind of thing. Same thing with the flu. You wanted to color a Lego brick a gradient. Uh, 
I have no idea. I do not know enough about the uh, chemistry of uh, Lego plastic. Alright, there we go. Get that in there. That's why you always tell me that we uh, can't snuggle, but no, I just don't listen. Well, you know, you should stop being so snuggleable. You know? It's obviously your own fault, Mad Martin. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> Yeah, one of the, uh, like, when I when I moved to the night shift um, at my uh, previous job, uh, before I started doing this full-time, uh, I went from, like, like, right before I did that, I had to do leave without pay um, when I got sick, because I, I was so low, you know, I was, like, so negative on uh, sick leave. And then a year into uh, working on the night shift... I was like, hey guys, uh, I gotta, um, call out sick, uh, you know, the, the one day coming up, so just FYI, because, uh, I got, I got use or lose, uh, sick leave. Made such a huge difference. All right, get our slopes on here. There we go. And two two by eights. Get our windows again. You don't call off except for when you absolutely have to. Well, I mean, if you got use or lose, you you better be using it. That is that is a benefit. Don't lose that leave. Like I've known people who uh didn't use uh sick time and vacation time and stuff like that and and ended up losing it and it's just like what are you doing dude? Take it. Ah, uh, wisdom teeth taking out. Yeah, that was uh, that was a fun three days of incredible pain. <laughs> ah. All right, then we get our slopes with cutouts. Luckily, they didn't, uh, like, they, they preemptively took out my wisdom teeth, um, because, you know, my mouth was not going to, uh, be able to, uh, deal with them. But it happened before, like, any actual problems, so, like, they, they didn't, you know, they weren't impacted or anything like that. No pain, but they had the stuff they injected to numb the area for 72 hours. Wow. I got the impression that they wouldn't do something like that because uh, of a risk of, like, biting your tongue off or something. Do I need more teeth removed? No, I'm good. I'm good. All right, there we go. Get that one right on there. Okay. So, spare parts. We got uh, dark red, pink, and bright green 1x1 one one flower plates, and dark gray 1x1 one one cylinder plate with hollow stud. There we go. 
All right, actually, before we get on to bag number 10, I think that it is time to do some minifigs. Go ahead and put that up there. Let's get our minifig sheets out, and we will start with this one. All right. Okay, so... Um, I have pulled very few from over here, so I think I'm just going to make a decision to pull from over here. Let's see, that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, so like I've only pulled five from over there. All right, so that is uh, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, there we go. All right. Let's go ahead and start a prediction. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? Let's go. So we have uh, not gotten three, four... 7, 8, 9, 12, 18. So those are the ones that we have not gotten. Yes, gambling for nothing. The points don't matter. We're, we're, we're very much like, uh, uh, whose line is it anyway? All right, so number two, the dice says uh, number two in wild style. Minotaur Sportscaster. Sports isn't a spell, well, Bunny. Doesn't work that way. Your D20 thinks it'll be 16 this time. That would be a Dorothy. All right, so get your uh, predictions in. Can I guess what is inside the minifig pack? Uh, I should probably get my uh, timer all ready. Totally do, yep. Let's see, there we go. All right, timer is all ready. Laying down a triple parlay on uh, three old guesses within 20 seconds. You can do that, right? Sure, go for it. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> it's very difficult to roll a d20 with a cat sleeping on your arm. You have another arm, dude. I don't know what the problem is. Just use the other arm. <laughs> Look, that's the cat's arm. The other arm is the die arm. The other arm is the uh, whatever needs to be done uh, can be done with that arm. Arm. Totally, totally, you know? It feels weird when you use the wrong arm. All right, just a few seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. And howdy, uh, Firestorm, Hi and how's it going? You got no space for Lego? Well, I mean, gotta make space, you know? Get rid of useless things like clothing. All right, and food. Who needs that? All right, predictions are closed. Let me go ahead and get everything ready, and go. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Legs. Uh, a... Okay, where's the torso? Okay. Alright, 16.65. I do believe that we have Apocalypse Benny. I, I felt the uh, air tanks and the uh, helmet. All right, it was indeed Apocalypse Benny. All right, let's go ahead and choose that prediction. Yes, within 20 seconds, complete that prediction. And a Red Hyena, Seal and Mortar, and Kinshear getting the hams. Very, very nice. Good payout. Uh, Preskich going for 20 to 50. 
Shield of Hope going for 50 to 60. Bahamut Popcorn Rocks and Lel Bunny going for no. All right. So some uh, pictures have come out of the uh, the next, um, apparently, because uh, some store broke uh, street date on it, uh, for the, uh, the space collectible minifigs uh, due out, I believe, in May. Not in April, so it's, like, super early. Um, and they have, uh, they have printing on the, uh, half tiles with, like, Starfield patterns on the, uh, the two. It's interesting. There you go. Benny has seen better days. We have a uh, spare uh, bar with clip in black. He uh, lost an arm at some point, which definitely is a thing that happens with old uh, uh, figures. He's got his uh, air tanks there. He's got his uh, space logoed... Uh, um, is that space on... Nope, that's just space on one side. Space logoed... Uh, um, container. The uh, the broken uh, chin strap, which was pretty common on these helmets uh, before they uh, started reinforcing them. <laughs> Seems like a useful upgrade. Could be. Alright, so you can get it up there. And that is number three, so that is a new figure for us. Alright. Next up, we have Series 8, and there is only one figure left for us to get, and that is Lederhosen Guy. And on our hanger, there is just one figure left, but I do have more hangers, so it's, it's fine. Toss that to the side. All right. So, let's get a, a prediction going. Can all guess what is inside the minifig pack? D20 says number seven. Uh, I would be, uh, I would not be opening another uh, ski lady. Let's see what my D20 says. 19, I need a reroll. 13 again, that would be the cheerleader. Um, I got 13 as well, so a cheerleader, double, uh, double die. Your favorite running part about this is uh, Bahamut betting no every time? Well, Bunny's been betting no more often. And longer. <laughs> I just say Bahamut first because it sorts alphabetically. I think? Might sort, uh... In terms of uh, how many bets, like the size of the bet, actually. That's actually probably how it does it. Size of the bet, now that I think about it. Minotaur AstroTurf maintenance this time, huh? Shouldn't that be an AstroTurf maintenance Minotaur? Hmm? 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 All right, get your predictions in. 50 seconds remaining. So there's only one left in this set that we need. We have gotten everything else. And some of these I'm not opening again, like uh, Bat Boy and Santa. And, and football player. I don't need more of those. Centaur Coal Miner. Man, think about the uh, black lung that a, a centaur would get. And where are the lungs on a centaur? Are they in the, uh, the human part, or are they in the horse part? You know? It's a good question. It's a really good question. Do centaurs have two sets? Well, I mean, they could, but but then, you know, they gotta be connected somehow. All right, predictions are closed. Go ahead and reset my uh, timer. There we go. And go. All right, let's see. What do we have? What is, what is that? That is... What is...
is that feel a round part. I have no idea what this part I'm feeling is. I should probably uh, go try to feel something. Uh, okay. Uh, 40.47 seconds. I believe that we have another uh, cowgirl. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, the second thing I felt was the uh, uh, lasso. Alright, so let's go ahead and mark off a, a second one of her. And let us choose that prediction. That is going to be a 20 to 50 seconds. Complete that prediction. And a Preskich getting all of the hams alone. Very nice. Red Hyena and Kinshi are going for within 20 seconds. Lel Bunny and Shield of Hope going for 50 to 60. And Bahamut and Popcorn Rocks going for no. All right, let's go ahead and put our uh, cowgirl together. That's just uh, one face there. There we go. It was saturated already. <laughs> there we go. That is a, uh, it's a cute torso, um, really nice, uh, uh, legs. Uh, shame that they're not dual molded. Um, and the hat and hair piece are really nice. The only downside of it is that it is, um, like, all the same, like, y if it was a random color, that would be really nice. Because you might get, like, red or blonde or something like that. Now all I have is, uh brunettes. I don't think they've made this piece with the hair uh, in another set. Did you rope Apocalypse uh, Benny with the lasso? She absolutely can. Ooh. She can't get it down over his uh, um, over his air tanks, but she could get it around his waist. There we go. She lassoed Apocalypse Benny. There we go. And there we go. All right. So that is that one. And now we go on to Series 25. So this will be a little bit of a different situation. All right, so we have gotten uh, Train Kid. We have gotten uh, the Handicapped Runner and or the Disabled Runner and the uh, Forest Sprite. There are no more Train Kids in here because I gave one away to my nephew who wanted one. So here we have, and there's uh, so there's three other ones that will be in this top row, this top section. Um, so, let's see. Okay, so that's going to be one up there. And one, two, three, four, five. So we'll roll a d6. That would be five. Okay. All right, so once again, I'm going to make a guess. Uh, I will uh, then weigh it, and we'll see if we get that right, and then uh, I'll scan it, but the scan is not part of the uh, uh, thing, so let's start the prediction. Alright, 
can all guess what is inside the minifig box. Get your predictions in. Uh, D20 says eight. So that would be um, a Triceratops girl. D12 says 12. That would be the um, the dog groomer. Didn't we get the dog groomer? Did I forget to mark that one down? I feel like we did. Or am I just like dreaming it? Hold on a second. Let me, uh, we did get the dog groomer. I just didn't mark that one down. All right, my bad. I did not mark that one down. All right, so we've gotten the dog groomer, the disabled runner, the train kid, and the forest sprite. So there's only two others that it could be. Uh, my D12 says 12 as well, so uh, that would be another uh, dog groomer. Howdy, Ariaru, how's it going? Won three big holy wars in quick succession in a co-op CK2 game. Nice. Nice. First your religious head wanted to invade Delhi, then Christians tried to crusade Egypt from you, and simultaneously Muslims declared jihad for Arabia. <laughs> Alright, it would be uh, very perfect to get the uh, goat herder uh, this time. But I have a suspicion that it's in the lower, the lower register. Okay, 20 seconds remaining. Get your predictions in. Minotaur sports coach for sure. Centaur dentist. All right. Does a centaur go to a doctor or a vet? No. Do they have to go to two different? Do they have to go to a doctor if it's in their uh, uh, human torso and a vet if it's in the horse torso? Yeah, I don't know. All right. So, our predictions are closed. Well, let's go ahead and shake it and see. All right. Sounds like it's got a good number of pieces. Um, I am going to guess that it is the forest sprite. All right. So that is going to be uh, my guess. Let's go ahead and weigh it. All right, 18.22. So it is not the forest sprite. Uh, let's see. Okay. The only ones that it could be... Oh, it could be the harpy. Could be the harpy, could be the uh, detective. I'm gonna say that the the weight indicates that it's the harpy because it's closer to that. All right, and that does have a lot of pieces. It sounded like it has a lot of pieces, so there we go. All right, now this is not going to uh, take us, you know, take into account the um, in the betting, but let's go ahead and scan it. Where is my? There it is. I need you to switch cameras. Switch cameras so you, you'll focus. Come on. There we go. Okay, it's predicting a pet groomer. Okay, let's find out. That would be a 12, which uh, two of the dice did indicate. Yeah, that's the pet groomer. Okay, so that is our second pet groomer. And that's a no. All right, choose that prediction, choose the outcome, and that is going to be a no. Complete that prediction. And Popcorn Rocks and Lel Bunny getting a lot of hams there. Very nice. Press Kitchen, Seal and Mortar going for Yes with Weight. And Yes with Guess was Shield of Hope, Red Hyena, Bahamut Zero, and Kinshir. Now, that was 18.22, and this is indicating 18.67. This is crazy. 
These, uh, oops, let's not do that. There we go, all right. Let's see how much of this, uh, all of this weighs here. Seven point seven five for the uh, figure itself. I wonder if they change something in between uh, something else that uh, affects the weight in between um, when they went with from the uh, small QR codes to the large ones. Or I wonder if the uh, people who uh, did this are just not very good. They had a uh, maybe not very precise uh, scale or something. Maybe this scale isn't very good. I don't know. Call shenanigans. <laughs> All right. So we have our pupper and our groomer. There we go. And uh, she has a uh, hearing aid, too. It's a really nice hairpiece as well. And a good pupper. And a spare set of scissors. All right, so that is our minifigs for tonight. All right, let me go ahead and put these away. We get back to our uh, medieval town square build. All right, Bahamut, have a good rest of your night. Probably some pieces of plastic. So uh, there are, like, you can have extra pieces like that uh, um, extra pair of scissors. Sometimes they will have them, and sometimes they won't. So that can make a difference. But the fact that uh, it's so far off... Like, there, there could also be different amounts of glue. It makes me wonder if they are using a little bit less glue now or something. I don't know. I do not know. All right. So we are back here. Back 10. All right, let's get large uh, plates out first. Let's set those aside. There we go. I think we'll uh, finish up this building, which may be the next bag after this. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see. All right. Just want one of these. Okay. There we go. And one by four. All right, Red Hyena, have a, a good rest of your night as well. All right, let's get the uh, one by one with two corner. And uh, Popcorn Rocks, you as well. Have a, a good rest of your evening. All right. Two by eight down here. And one by ten. Oh. Set it up that way. All right. Hold on a second. Open my window a little bit. Okay. Another one. And we have a 1 by 10 in the middle. All right, so flip it over. Let's actually move that uh, building back there a little bit. 
two by four. That is four up there. There we go. All right. Two by two over here. And then we got some uh, medium nougat uh, grill tiles. There we go. And then we have some of the pieces that they're using for thatch. There we go. All right, four by uh, three by three angle plate. Brown one by one cylinder plate. So using plates for uh, um, roofs is a pretty part effective uh, way of doing it. And especially if you can just lift it off and lay it down, um, allows easy access to the uh, interior. But it does leave a little something to be desired, I think, sometimes. Definitely not digging how high these parts look. There's a lot of side stud pieces. There we go. And one by one side studs. And another one here. And three more of these. All right. And a black one by six. Howdy, Tazarin. How's it going? Put that right on there. All right. Now do the other one. Ugh is a description of how you can be doing. Yes, yes. Uh, sounds like not very good. I'm sorry to hear that. Hopefully things get better. At least it's the weekend. Unless, of course, you have to work on the weekend or something. Your laptop is in the shop until Thursday for a GPU fan replacement. Ooh. That is unfortunate. I think it qualifies as UG, yeah. yeah. All right, let's see. Okay. Corner side studs, two one by one cylinder plates. Is it a warranty replacement? I hope so, at least. There we go. Get those on there. And another three by three. And a two at one by four. All right, then down at the bottom, we have the last one by one brick with two side studs and then black and then brown. There we go. All right, so that is going to fit on right in there. There we go. Setting it back pretty far. All right, then we make another one. 
It's gonna cost you 185 bucks. Manufacturer's war warranty ran out uh, two years ago, and Best Buy Geek Squad protection plan ran out like 12 days ago. Ow! Ow! That's 12 days. Oof. Yeah, it's like uh, um, my TV uh, had a, a whole column of uh, pixels die two weeks after the warranty ran out. It really sucked. Oof, indeed, yeah. So it's really not worth uh, doing anything with. Oh yeah, just live with it. I mean, the, the good news is that it's a 4K monitor. So, um... Like, it's really only a half pixel of uh, when I run it at... Uh, 1020. A lot of manufacturers do offer a grace period after the warranty goes out. I asked. Like, I was, I was, uh, I contacted them and they're like, nope. If it had been a day, maybe. Maybe if I was a business. That might be different, but... Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty disappointing. <laughs> pretty disappointing. Alright, let's get all of the thatch pieces on here. This much looks a little bit better, I think. And then we get the last one right there. Yeah, maybe the problem is is that there's not enough popping out on these. I don't know. All right. Two by two and a dark gray brick brick. Another dark gray brick brick and regular gray brick. One by two tiles with center studs. And that is going to go that way. Okay. And then we get the, uh, the long bison horns in here. There we go. Just a one by two uh, hinge, I guess, because they want that uh, plate in there. So there we go. Get that on there, and with it hinged, uh, it does look like it'll be coming up uh, fairly straight. That's pretty good. Get this put on here. All you want to do is play your uh, current hyperfixation of uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition. No, I know, I get that. It is uh, it is never fun when something is preventing you from playing the, the thing that you want to play. I get that. All right, and so before we put the roof on, let's just get these two extra pieces out of the way. Uh, brown and black one-by-one -one cylinder plates. There we go. All right, so that is that way, and the chimney over there. So we have uh, it flush on the back so that it can fold up against the uh, other building, whereas we do have a uh, an overhang here. If you look, there is actually a bit of a gap there, but 
having the um, the plates here do hide the kind of odd uh, angling of the uh, slopes there. So that's pretty good. Okay. All right. So next bag, bag number 11, probably going to be fairly small. Looks like it. I see something good. Look at look at the dark gray goat. Oh, so cute. It's the goat goat. <laughs> Rich household they have a chimney. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. Alright. Let's go ahead and put these pieces to the side for the moment. I guess all the cheese that they make is uh, goat cheese from that one goat. Alright, so on this side... Brown one by one cylinder. There is the other. There it is. All right, and then bar holders with clips. And a 3L bar, which is over here. And a black 1x1 one one cylinder plate with bar for the handle. All right, let's get this connected in. There we go. So I think this is going to be the uh, gate right here. All right. Turn it back around and two by four with two studs. That goes on right there. Get that plate on there. And two by four brick right there. Get some slopes for this rock. There we go. A little bit of beige grill tiles here. And green 1x3 tile. Some more rock pieces. Ah, there we go. That goes right there. That one right there. Yeah, all right. Five. All right. Uh, next up, we get a, uh, a mushroom, a rather large mushroom. That goes right in there. Hopefully the goat won't eat it. I mean, maybe it'll be fine. I don't know. Smaller uh, mushroom. Right back there. And a pair of one by one tiles with top clips. Ah, neat. Okay, so this is going to be a water trough. 
clear one by two plates and clear one by or a trans light blue one by two uh, tiles. There we go. And side stud pieces. One by four tiles on the sides. And a one by two ingot tiles on the ends. There we go. So, making a uh, neat little trough there for the uh, the goat. Fun fact, all mushrooms are edible, some just only once. That is true. That is true. I, I don't think that's quite what people mean when they say that they're edible. All right, let's see. Get one down here and two spaces apart for all of these. All right, Celan, thank you very much for coming on out. Have a good rest of your night. All equipment is airdroppable once. <laughs> Was a question of whether it survives, huh? All right, over here we have a two. That right, is two spaces apart, and then two over here as well. Oh, that's two away. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. Yep, all right, that is ten. They are all pointed in the right direction. Okay, so then over here we have a stone... Get another top clip there. Some flowers in here underneath them. That one is right there. All right. All right, so five... 6L bars with stop. There we go. There we go. There we go. And then a brown carrot top here. Slide that one up to it. There we go. All right. It's a little break in the fence, but uh, that is okay. Okay, another 6L bar with stop there. 6L bar with stop here. And a brown carrot top. And a brown carrot top here. All right, get our small dark green tree on there and put our goat in, in his little uh, enclosure. All right, next up, we connect these up. Let's get these pieces over here. Oh, wait, also, is there... Yeah, I missed... Uh, there is our little squirrel friend. He is going to be a uh, little squirrel friend. Love the, uh, the Lego squirrels. They're very cute. If the camera would focus. There we go. 
He's definitely not plotting to steal a, an acorn collection, though. He's definitely not. There we go. Alright, so... Get those flat on there. Let's actually move our... Minifigs back there. There we go. All right, there we go. And then we basically do the same thing that we did with the other one. Get the curved slope on there. One by one with cross axle holes. And there we go. And then we take our... 3L axle with stop and put it all through there to lock it in. There we go. Alright, so spare parts. We got uh, beige 1x1 cylinder plate with hollow stud, red flower plate, and a brown carrot top. Alright, let's go ahead and get our little uh, boy who's a uh, Making some uh, cheese. He's just fed the kitty. So he is he's going to be watching the kitty lap up that milk. He's very happy about it because he likes kitties. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and push this to the back. I'll go ahead and... Do that. There we go. So that is the uh, the first part of it done. So we got the uh, the three buildings there that can be uh, folded open a bit, and a small hand cart and a, a cheese stand. Obviously selling off the uh, the produce from the cheese maker who appears to be a kid. Don't ask me why. I don't I don't make the rules here. But it looks really good. Like this would be a fine set in and of itself right now. Um but I'm glad that there is more to it. Especially with the uh with the goat the return of the goat. Kids got to work. That's true. That's true. Apprentice running the stand. Well, there isn't an adult who goes with that building, so I don't know. I do not know. But it's very good so far. I really do appreciate uh, um, how it's coming together and everything. And, I mean, you know, it can fold up and make a, uh, a nice dense little uh, block of buildings, too. Although it does look a bit better folded open. So, very, very cool. But that is going to be where we wrap it up tonight. Uh, when we come back next week, we will uh, get started on the second half of the uh, buildings. The adult slipped off to the tavern. That could be. That could be. I guess we'll find out uh, next time. Uh, but we will be uh, starting on that uh, next week, because it is uh, an inn and tavern that we got uh, going on next week. So I want to thank you guys for coming on out. Uh, we will be back uh, next week for more of this. Let me go ahead and see if there is a... Uh... Uh, no. All right. So we'll go ahead and uh, uh, call it here. Some yearn for the mines, others yearn for cheese. Mmm, cheese. Hey, I mean, again, as they say, and no one has as many friends as a man with many cheeses. So I want to thank you guys for coming on out. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for some more Spelljammer. Monday, back for more Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Wednesday, back for some more retro gaming with Monster Rancher Advance 2 and uh, building something else in the evening. Uh, Friday, back to uh, more Final Fantasy VI Pixel Remaster, and uh, continuing this on next Friday night. So I want to thank you guys for coming on out, 
and I shall see you next time. See you then, everyone.